Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss McCain. I teach history. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about my experience. According to the 2020 census, more than 33 million Americans identify as two or more races. Just to put that in perspective, that is one in 10 Americans. That number grew 25 million just in the time between the previous census in 2010. The census continues to project that this group will continue to increase with more globalization, immigration, and overall just the growing population. The census projects that by 2045, there will no longer be a majority race in America. This identification of two or more races comes in many combinations of ethnicities and cultures. For me personally, this mix, according to my 23andMe, is 50% Ashkenazi Jewish, 7.3% British, 41.1% Sub-Saharan African, and 1.6% undetected. The suspense of that 1.6. While I consider myself more than just percentages, it has been really cool as a historian to piece together how these percentages are actually explicable and how lots of these have stories to them, including those of triumph and of oppression. But nevertheless, it is always fascinating for me to think about how my parents ended up together and with me how two people with incredibly different backgrounds found each other in the very racially divided city of Boston. If you can believe it, interracial marriage was not even legal until 1967, after the Supreme Court case of Loving v. Virginia. This was the same year that my dad was born. My parents met in the 80s, the day before Valentine's Day, at a little house party. At the time, my mom lived in Sudbury, and my dad lived in Dorchester. This was certainly a large roadblock in their relationship, as the demographics of Sudbury were not necessarily safe for an interracial relationship. Similarly, in Dorchester, my dad was taking a huge risk and historically large no-no in terms of pursuing a relationship with my mom. Both were met with racial slurs upon arrival at my mom's senior prom at the Stowe Country Club. My mom's guidance counselor told her that if she decided to hang out with trash, she too would be trash. My parents did the equivalent of a modern day situationship, i.e. they broke up and got back together many, many times. They ended their relationship in the mid-90s for what they thought was forever. But in 1998, three weeks prior to my mom about to move to New York from Boston, she ran into my dad in downtown Crossing while they were both working. Talk about fate. And while this fate brought them back together, it didn't stop any of the real life struggles that came with their relationship. My mom left her job after her boss told her that she could certainly do better than my dad. And my dad's family did not approve of the marriage and ultimately did not attend the wedding or meet me until I was three years old. But I grew up in a house with a lot of love, a lot of education in terms of different cultures and holidays, and with a lot of good food and a crazy good seasoning cabinet. While when I was growing up, I didn't necessarily see or grow up with a lot of kids that looked like me, I now see so many mixed couples and kids around me. And of course, I give that obligatory smile of understanding. So what is the point of me telling you my, cute, my parents' cute little love story? Well, they serve as a perfect example to me of why we should celebrate differences. Even with all the potential scary moments and difficult times, love prevailed. Cultural exchange and celebration of cultural differences in intersectionality overcoming of prejudices and stereotypes, heightened communication and conflict resolution, and a very fun and unique family dynamic are things that I learned from my own family. My parents and me get to be part of a growing group that makes the United States more diverse. In short, we help contribute to making history and social progress. These are lessons we can all take into our daily lives and all of our relationships, whether it be friendships, in classes, dorms, work environments, or with significant others. Embrace differences, be curious to learn, and celebrate each other's cultures. Thank you.